Next fight in the card is going to be another women's bout in the lightweight division at 155 pounds between Abby Montes, who goes by Brave, and Marina Moknakina from Russia. Marina is 6-3 and three overall, 2-3 and three in her last five fights. She hails specifically out of St. Petersburg, Russia, 34 years old, 5-6 in height with a 66-inch reach. And she trains out of a gym called Sambo Petir. As for Abby Montes, who goes by Brave, she's 3-1 and one overall. She hails out of Guadalajara, Mexico. And she trains out of Lobo Gym with teammates like Alexa Grasso, Armin Aldana, and Alejandro Lara. Montez is just 22 years old. She's 5'6 in height with a 67-inch reach. So height and reach-wise, about the same, but a 12-year youth advantage for Montez over the 34-year-old Marina Moknakina. Now, as for the numbers coming in on Tapology, it appears that Montez is the big underdog, with 82% of the votes going to Moknakina. I do agree. I like Marina in this spot. I was not impressed with Montez's last fight. And losing to Alina Kaliznik, oh my gosh, it was just overall not a good performance. I feel like at times she looked overwhelmed by Alina. It wasn't a good look overall. On the flip side, Marina Moknakina is coming off of that decision loss to Kayla Harrison where she went the full distance, showed good durability, good ring IQ, lasted the entire time. I mean, no one really lasts with Kayla Harrison because she's so tough of a fighter. If she fights that way against Montez, you imagine she probably gets a win here, but it's never that easy, and of course it's women's MMA. Now looking at the background of these two fighters, for Abby Montez, she's from Mexico. We mentioned before she's training out of Lobo Gym. Now her big break in the PFL was she fought Clarissa Shields last year. She was a plus 195 underdog, and she went in there and won by split decision. Now granted, it wasn't even split. They should have made it unanimous decision, but because the PFL loves Clarissa Shields, you see her all of these advertisements they have during their shows, and quite frankly, she's not a good mixed martial artist. She's a good boxer, but mixed martial artist, not so much. And in that fight, Abby Montez beats her. The same Abby Montez who just lost to Alina Kolisnik. So just keep that in mind. Clarissa Shields, who's the poster child for PFL's women's division, not the poster child, I would say actually that's more like Kayla Harrison, but she's up there. She does the commercials with the Bose headphones and stuff like that during their telecast. She literally got beat by a girl who just lost to Alina Kolisnik. That was her claim to fame. She won that fight by split decision, did a good job, used her ground control. But in her last fight, when she fought Alina Kolisnik, she couldn't get her to the ground. On the feet, she looked okay at times, did not push the tempo. It reminds me a lot of the Jin Fry fight the other day. So Jin Fry lost the fight against Vanessa Demopoulos, and it was close. Could have gone either way. But the one thing that Jin Fry did not do that didn't help her, when she had opportunities to keep combinations going and back up Demopoulos against the fence, she would like reset and back up to the center of the cage. Be like, okay, let's reset. Give you some space. Are you ready? Are you ready to go? And Montez was doing that with Kalisnik. Instead of like keeping the combinations going and pushing the pressure, she allowed the fight to just stay close. And so very poor eye fighter IQ. If she does that in this fight against Marina, she will again risk losing the fight the scorecards because she's just not doing enough. Now, the things that I do like about Abby Montez when she's fighting the right way, her grappling and wrestling is pretty good. She didn't show it against Alina. In this fight, if she tries that though against Marina, it might be a problem because Marina is very good at jiu-jitsu. Now, Abby Montez also has a good lower leg kick when she uses it. Again, in the Kalisnik fight, she wasn't using that as well, but it is part of her arsenal. And her striking is pretty good. I mean, in the context of the fight against Clarissa Shields, she beats her, right? Who's a world-class boxer. Now, most of that fight was on the ground, but the point is she was able to survive that fight. On the feet against Alina Kaliznik? No, she didn't look very good. It just doesn't make sense. Like, on the feet against Shields, she was serviceable. Okay. On the feet against Kaliznik, she got pieced up. It just doesn't fucking add up. A very inconsistent fighter. At 22 years old, she's still kind of finding her way. And it kind of makes sense. Being young, inconsistent. And so sometimes she may have a good fight, may have a bad fight. And we mentioned before, she's at a very good gym with high-level training partners. Now, my concerns for Abby Montez. First of all, that last fight. That entire fight. Big concern. I'm not trying to rank Adelina Kaliznik, but... She's not that good, and basically Abby Montez went out there and just laid a big old goose egg and just didn't show that heart, that desire to win. When the fight was close, she just lacked that dog in her to actually go out there and get the fight and win it. She also lacks experience. At 22 years old, only a few fights under her belt. Yes, the Clarissa Shields fight was amazing. Good win. Got her name out there. But we've seen from that point on to now, hasn't made big improvements. I'm not even sure about her cardio. And the biggest concern is her heart. Do you want to win the fight? And in terms of being tested, she hasn't been hurt in the octagon. Her last fight against Alina Kaliznik, she got popped a few times, like a little bit of a runny nose, bloody nose, whatever, but nothing major. What happens when she gets cornered against a really good fighter and someone pushes her against the cage, someone beats her up and she gets hurt? We don't know yet. And at 22 years old, she's probably never been in a situation like that. So there's a lot of unknowns here with the young Abby Montez. Now, as for the Russian, Marina Muknakina, she was born and raised in Russia. She's currently based out of St. Petersburg, Russia, which, by the way, can also be called Leningrad, Russia. Just a little factoid for you. A former six-time Sambo World Champion, eight-time Russian Sambo National Champion. So right there, boom, okay. High-level mixed martial arts. Sambo may be one of the best sports to take part in before transitioning over to mixed martial arts, along with the likes of like wrestling, kickboxing. Sambo is up there. One of the best sports to do if you're looking to eventually make a transition to mixed martial arts. So she has that base. 
world champion. She's one and one in Bellator. She also fought in Fight Nights Global. She began her mixed martial arts pro career with four straight wins by submission. Now, she hasn't had a submission in a while, but submissions are definitely part of her game plan. If Abigail Montez, Abby Montez, wants to take the fight to the ground, that would be something she has to be very cautious of because Marina is very good at submissions and also very good at submission defense. Remember, she just went to a full distance against Kayla Harrison and survived the full distance of three rounds, which in itself is very impressive. Okay, so she fought Kayla Harrison last fight. She was a plus 1,500 underdog. Yes, big time underdog. And Kayla Harrison tried submissions, but every time she tried them, Marina defended them very well. I would imagine if you compare Kayla Harrison and her aggressiveness and how she fights to Abby Montez, I imagine Marina's going to face a lot less aggression in this fight. Abby doesn't come forward like Kayla Harrison, doesn't wrestle like Kayla Harrison. Overall, for Marina, she's going to have more space, more time. It should be an easier fight for her. Prior to Kayla Harrison, she fought Claudia Zamora. She beat her 2021 by decision in the PFL. Claudia's 3-3 overall. And Marina was a minus 340 favorite in that spot. So not much of a test. She lost to Janae Harding in 2019 by decision in Bellator. Harding is 6-6 six six overall. And she was a favorite in that fight to win. So not a great look on her tapology. A fight that she probably should have won. She was a 2-1 favorite. And Harding is a 500 level fighter. She also fought Liana Jojoa in 2018. Lost to her as well in Fight Nights Global 83. Now Jojoa was in the UFC but recently got cut. And she was 1-3 in, in the UFC. So she has some losses there that are not exciting. The Kayla Harrison decision loss. Probably the best fight she's fought overall in her career. So there's a lot of MMA math we're doing here for Marina. We're choosing her to win the fight, but it's based on MMA math and not based on her necessarily dominating opponents. It's more like she's been doing well against other people and maybe fought some better fighters than her opponent. We're not sure Marina's better than Abby Montez. We just think she's better than Abby Montez in this matchup. Now, what's to like about Marina's game? Number one, very durable. We talked about it. She's never been finished before. and She just went three rounds with Kayla Harrison. She has excellent submission defense, and that goes without saying three rounds with Kayla Harrison. She has excellent Sambo skills, obviously a Sambo world champion. That translates very well to mixed martial arts. Her submission game hasn't been a factor her last few fights, but remember her first four pro fights, she won by submission. If the fight gets to the ground, I imagine she'll at least look for submission opportunities. And lastly, over the last few fights, she's made significant improvement in her striking, in her ring IQ, and just her overall presence. Experience is probably the biggest detriment to her game. She needs more octagon time. Now, thankfully for her, she's in the PFL, tons of fights throughout the year, but she just needs more time of the octagon to improve and at 34 it's kind of like now or never right now my concern is for marina as we just mentioned before it is now or never for her at 34 years old she can't afford many losses and she needs to make some significant improvements right now her striking is decent but it needs to improve and she can be a bit one-dimensional striking is not awful it's not great but if she can't get her submission game going or at least get some close submission opportunities and some control time it's hard for her to find a path to victory so from that standpoint if she fights a fighter who's very good at submission defense and ground defense she finds herself in a bit of a gray area it's hard for her to win that way in the scorecards now the fights we watched right on this film we watched montez versus shield from 2021 Montez vs. Kaliznik earlier this year, Makina vs. Torbiva from 2016, Morkina vs. Jojoa from 2018, and of course, Morkina vs. Kayla Harrison from earlier this year. If you want to watch any one of those five fights as part of our free video library here at MMA Fight Club, just look down below here on YouTube. In the description, you're going to see those five links available. Okay, just to wrap things up here, my final few thoughts on this fight. Experience-wise and fighter IQ-wise, I give a significant advantage to Marina Makakina. As for cardio, I thought Abby Montez started to get a little tired in her last fight. Not a big issue. She's much younger, too. She should have a good gas tank. So from a cardio perspective, these guys are about the same grade. As for finishing ability, Marina has a big advantage there. Now, Abby Montez has one finish on her career, like three total fights. She had a TKO ground and pound finish. But Marina has a significant advantage there because of her submission ability. So if a finish happens in this fight, I believe that's going to be the side of Marina with a submission finish. Neither fighter is an amazing striker. You know, they throw okay combinations. Nothing with a lot of power. Not very effective. For Abby Montez, she's going to need to improve in that area of the game because her ground game is okay. Her striking is okay too. If she wants to fight in the feet, she has to make improvements there. And the same thing for Marina. If she wants to be better on the feet, we've got some more improvements and more volume, better combinations. In terms of grappling, there's a big edge there for Marina, as we talked about already. She's got good jiu-jitsu skills. And last but not least, who has more heart? I thought Abby Montez did not show a lot of heart against Alina Kaliznik. I thought Kaliznik was the one who showed more heart in that fight. She was passionate, obviously representing Ukraine, and she went out there and she took the fight. Now, of course, we mentioned before the FPR, whatever, the algorithm there for the PFL actually had Montez winning the fight, and it was close, and she landed more strikes. But still, listen, close is not enough, man. It's not a game of horseshoes, right? You need to actually secure the win. And in that fight, at some point, Kaliznik did what it took to win the fight, and Montez did not. 
Now, as for Mukhtarkina, she just went three full rounds with Harrison. I mean, that in itself is a big accomplishment. So when it comes to Hart, who will go the extra mile and do what it takes to get the win, I'm going to give that edge here to Marina. Now, with that said, I have not been on a hot streak recently with picking women's fights. Montez will probably open as a significant dog in this fight. I'm talking like minus 275 for Marina, around plus 220 for Montez. That's my estimated money line when it opens up. If that's the case, then I will choose Montez to win. <laughs> and if I bet in the fight in my line, I will bet on Montez. So even though my analysis tells me that Marina should win the fight, at minus 275-ish in my line, it'll be a parlay piece for some people and it will not be worth it. Especially what we've seen recently. These two to one favorite women fights are not going our way. Now the fight probably goes to decision. I like that prop. I also like Abby Montez by decision and I like Marina by submission. When those props come out, those will be the three props that I'd be looking at. In any case, guys, that's your breakdown. We opened this card with three straight women's fights, and I would be very cautious here on betting these fights. Don't put too much behind it. We could be assured at least one or two of these first few fights are not going to go the way we think. Something outside the norm is going to happen. Someone who can't wrestle will start wrestling. Someone who used to be able to strike can't strike. Maybe there's a point taken, whatever the case may be. But I am choosing Marina Maknakina, the Russian, to win this fight either by decision or by submission. And that's our breakdown, boys and girls.